I'm delighted to say Shane Keegan is with us to chat a bit of football. Shane, how are you getting on? Oh, nicely. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, will we start with Liverpool Arsenal last night? Like, I'm not. What, what's the biggest? What's the biggest theme from last night when you're looking at it? Is it God Liverpool without Mo Salah, without Sadio Mane? They really are a, a shadow of of their usual selves. Or is it? Do you know what Arsenal without Granite Jack on the pitch can show a bit of grit and, and and they're starting to show a bit of stomach for the fight? Yeah, you probably nailed the two of them. <coughs> Excuse me, you probably named the two of them there on. To be fair, I suppose you look at the Liverpool side of things, and I mean. Is they really, really were very, very poor. Um, I mean, that, that Minamino chance at the very, very end was really the only thing you could remotely describe as a, as a proper goal-scoring chance for them. Um, so to do that against a, a 10-man Arsenal that were that was missing some significant players, not even, you know, not even a full-strength 10-man Arsenal, um, is, is definitely, definitely a worry for them. And I suppose the big thing for them on, and it, it's... I, I was kind of interested sitting down to watch it last night. The problem they have is uh, there's very few teams you'd say this about. You take out the star man and, well, OK, who's the go-to man to, to kind of either score chances or create chances without Salah around? The, the, the star man is your right back. Um, and the, the big problem I think they have at the moment, on is his form has actually dropped off a cliff in the last few weeks really really bad timing because it's exactly the time that they needed him to to step forward and like i think i think trent is a, a, an absolutely fantastic footballer i think he's brilliant but i've seen a lot of liverpool in the last couple of weeks and he's been nowhere near the player that he had been up to this point in the season um and without him on top form and creating chances and be it crosses or those passes or look we've all seen what what he can do with the ball um Without him there creating and with Salah gone, they're, really, they're in a bit of trouble as to how the chances are, are going to come about. That's interesting because obviously Trent's struggles last season were, were very well publicised and it seemed this year he'd come back angrier and he'd come back and started the season in just unbelievable form. So is this dip in form the same sort of dip that he experienced last year in terms of the, the attributes that are letting him down or, or are you noticing something different? Um, yeah, I, I think both both sides of his game have have suffered in recent weeks. Um, the same level of of creativity that we we had been seeing. I mean, like his level of creativity up until let's say three four games ago was absolutely off the charts. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. You normally talk about you know defenders in their own category in terms of well, this guy had the most assists for a defender, um, and it's way down the list behind attackers and midfielders. I mean, Trent is way out in front in the Premier League for most assists full stop which is is quite ridiculous really but that that same uh, you know both both my eyes my eye test from watching them and kind of the numbers when you look at at you know assists or even expected assists that kind of stuff if you dig down deeper his, his numbers have dropped way way off um in that sense and at the same time um on it's probably you know, I would have, <laughs> I would have been one of the ones that would have been gritting my teeth when you had when you had John Giles on a few weeks ago, and he was having a go at the defensive side of Trent's game. I I thought Trent hadn't been showing up defensively this year. I thought he'd been doing an awful lot better. I don't know whether that's because Liverpool were holding on to the ball so well that teams couldn't exploit it, or whether it was just improving defensively. But um, again, in recent weeks, there's no doubt that teams have, have have started to get at his particular area of the field. An awful lot of teams are starting to play with two up top setting up maybe with a 5-3-2 formation and going after that space in behind his flank. Um, and even when he has been in that space, he's been, I mean, he, he, I'm trying to think of a recent game um, where he, he got his, his timing of his, his offside trap wrong and about three consecutive times in the space of a half an hour. Um, so, yeah, as I say, he's, he's look, I think he'll bounce back. I think he's, he's, a, he's a brilliant footballer, but just certainly from the creative side of things, the timing isn't great because, as I say, was we saw as we saw it last night. Not really sure where the where where the creativity is going to come from that side with with with, with Salah not around, you know. Mm. Speaking of Salah, the I guess prognosis from Jurgen Klopp was not to be worried, and he seemed fairly lighthearted about the whole contract situation when asked about it this week. Is there something deeper there, Shane? Do you think? Do you think that that's a, a front for for a deep concern that that Liverpool may not actually be willing to? I guess smash their own wage structure to give one of their best ever players the money he deserves. Ah, look, we're all commenting from the outside on, so we don't we don't know, so you can't say with any certainty. But I I 
personally would be amazed if it's not just hardball and it's not mm. just negotiation tactics. I mean, essentially what it boils down to is, I, I think the length of, of term of the contract, if, if Salah is pushing for three, maybe even four years, I'm not 100% sure. I know he's it's certainly looking for at least three. And Liverpool are saying, well, hold on. We're probably maybe only going to have one maximum two years of you left at this ridiculous peak level that we've got you at. I think they're just going to have to bite the bullet and accept the fact that they're going to have to pay for what they're getting at the moment for the next three years for, for, for the sake of trying to keep it for the next year or two. And look, if you're still paying him an astronomical Michael Wage in, in Wage 3 and he's not quite at the same level, well, look, you're probably still up on the deal if he can keep to the level that he's at at the moment. I mean, you know, <laughs> he, I'm not saying he'll be sitting over there hoping Liverpool struggle while he's away, but it'll certainly strengthen his uh, his claims for a stronger contract anyway, that's for sure. Uh, on the other side of the coin then, last night, the, the Arsenal positives that you mentioned, I, I guess it'll give him a bit of a boost going into the North London derby on, on Sunday, the, the previous fixture at the start of the season was was I mean it was a shocking performance from Tottenham really Shane I think it's fair to say as much as Arsenal were good that day and you suspect a lot of the build-up will be around Spurs going into Sunday Conte it seems already trying to send out messages to the hierarchy that this squad is not good enough is that what he's trying to do and, and do you think his messages will actually be listened to? Yeah yeah um, I suppose just on, on Arsenal first on mm. the, the one thing that I was kind of most impressed with with Arsenal last night was uh, Mikel Arteta's decisiveness um, on the back of the sending off. Um, you know, he didn't have, he obviously felt he didn't have a like-for-like like replacement for Shaka when, when the sending off came around and decided to change the whole system, which was, you know, a risky enough move, essentially went to brought on an extra defender and, and decided to go 5-3-1. Um, which is, a, you know, it wouldn't be a whole lot of teams would adapt that shape when they find themselves down to 10 men. And it worked an absolute dream. It worked an absolute dream for them. Um, it did so, so well defensively, coughed up almost nothing and, and still looked reasonably decent on, on the counter by having the wing backs there. It gave them some, I thought Saka was brilliant. He's just getting better and better and better. He really, really is. Um, so I suppose fair play to Arteta, first and foremost, for, for the reaction to it. In terms of Saturday's game, I mean, it's bad. You've got two huge games this weekend on in, mm. in Spurs against Arsenal and, and City against Chelsea. And essentially, you've got four teams. If you ignore Chelsea's few decent results in the Cup, you've essentially got four teams coming into those two games all out of form. Like, none of them are none of them are shooting the lights out. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a Spurs fan and, and the brother-in-law is an Arsenal fan and we'd be kind of slagging each other to and fro and that kind of crack. And, you know, I don't think there's either of us sticking our necks out too far <laughs> for, for for the game because I think it, neither of us was very, very confident in, in what we're seeing at the moment. You don't think City oh, are think in form? Right. Well, City, City aren't in form on, I, I don't think, absolutely not. I mean, certainly if you look at the last three Premier League games, um, and this is the amazing thing about them, it just shows how ridiculously kind of good they are overall because I watched them against Arsenal um, I thought Arsenal certainly deserved something from the game. I didn't think City were fantastic at all, um, and they managed to win the game 2-1. I watched them against Brentford, really, really toiled and struggled, managed to get over the line 1-0, and I saw them against Leicester, in which they conceded three goals, which is most unlike them, and still managed to... So, so they've gone through a, a, a poor blip in form by their standards. I don't think it can be described as anything else. And they've come out the other side of it with nine points from nine, which is just ridiculous, really. Jeez, Shade, I definitely would think from watching on at, at City, um, they play them more and more like Barcelona. You know, that sort of quick football, that pep tactic of five seconds to get the ball back, really exciting play. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have said their form has dipped too much. Uh, I, I, I'm talking very, very short term there, Ashling. I mean, <laughs> if, you look at, if you look at City over the course of the season, I mean, it's just fantastic it, it really mm. really is fantastic to watch it but in a lot of senses one in the way that you've said like you know the poor opposition they're just absolutely suffocated you know on the rare occasion where you do have the ball sure City have, have probably all barred the two centre halves probably within striking distance of being able to close you down immediately so they they suffocate the life out of you um in that respect and while I say Brentford game, you know, I suppose I'm saying it was poor by their standards because they only won one nil at no stage. You know, it was about as comfortable a one nil as you'll ever see. At no stage, they did not look like they were going to win. I just think 
that brilliant form we'd seen August, September, October, November, I think that has, you know, it's just disappeared that little bit. Arsenal definitely showed weaknesses um, in it. Leicester, as we say, scoring three times, you know, I know City were well ahead at the time, but still, for a, you know, for a brief moment there before they kicked on again, it looked as though Leicester might be within, within striking distance. Look, as a body of work over the season, they're fantastic. I just think those three most recent league games, you know, stumbled a little bit in terms of what we're usually used to see in terms of free flow and football. Um, but that's judging them off the, the, the highest of highest standards. And if they win this game at the weekend, this is jumping ahead now, but if I was looking on, I would think the league is over. Well, what is your view? Yeah, you'd have to think so, wouldn't you? I mean, you know, all neutrals, I'm sure, will be will be shouting for, for, for Chelsea, who, you know, as I say, three recent cup games aside, hopefully that'll have given them a boost and might see them return to, to, to slightly better form. But their own league form, you know, it's, it's not so long ago. It's just, it's so disappointing, guys. I don't know if you feel the same, but to have gone within the space of about six weeks to what we all believed was a, a, a proper, proper three-horse race to all of a sudden we're, we're saying that the league is going to be done and dusted this weekend. It's, 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 it's depressing, really, so it is. And, I mean, Chelsea's form kind of summarise, sums that up. I mean, Chelsea have won two of their last seven league games. I mean, that's that's some collapse from a team that looked so so good. And I mean, they're going through such a they're going through such kind of turmoil at the moment that Tuchel is even he's even gone away from the back three in 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 two of those three cup games. He, he's lined out with a back four, so he's obviously even questioning what's working best for for Chelsea at the moment. It'll be really really interesting to see whether he goes with a with the, the three centre halves that were <clears throat> that were most used to or whether he, he goes with this back four that he's rolled out in, in a couple of the games recently, but it's hard to see City still not getting getting the getting the result and coming away really, isn't it? Yeah, it is really disappointing. Um, you know, it's so exciting at the start of the year and then when you do look on and it's a, a three horse as you said and now looking like a one horse race. It is uh, disappointing to see. And just mention on, on Chelsea there, yeah, their form hasn't been that great in the, the late of the league, like they draw their last two home games. I think compared to when Tuchel first came in, there, there's definitely a shift, I felt, in the last few games. Yeah, yeah. Look, I suppose Lukaku been back in the side obviously gives them something very, very different. It, it, it gives them that focal point they need. Now, he's still... You know, he still hasn't really clicked, clicked uh, compared to, you know, he th- he started well at the start of the year, Ashing, and I think we all thought, you know, this is exactly what Chelsea required and this man's going to go close to hitting 30 goals this year and, and that's why Chelsea will be will, will be right there to the death. And again, that, that just doesn't really seem to really seem to have happened for him. Um, obviously, we had the, the situation with his comments and, you know, him not being happy with, not been used enough or not been used in the right manner. I don't think that's still fully kind of fixed itself. Um, I don't think he probably still feels he's been used in the best manner possible. But there's so much quality there that, you know, I I do think Chelsea will take off again. I think they will hit a, a, a really, really strong run of form again, similar to what we've seen. Problem is how much ground they lose before they re reestablish that form. I mean, you look at the quality in, in the middle of the field. I mean, you could definitely make an argument that that Jorginho and Kante is when they're together there is the best midfield centre midfield partnership in, in in world club football really. And any time I, I see him play, I think Kovacic looks absolutely brilliant as well. I think he'd be nailed on starter in any other midfield. It, it probably in certainly in the Premier League in the world if 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 the two that he has weren't ahead of him. I love the three centre halves. So I do. You know, they've kind of chopped and changed on the right, but. Thiago Silva and Rudiger as the central and the left, I think, have been two of the outstanding centre halves. Um, Chilwell's been a loss because Alonso hasn't um, hit the same levels that Chilwell was was at earlier in the season. I think that's been a little bit part of it. Um, so it has. But the real thing, the big thing, Ashing, is they just seem to be struggling to get that right blend among the front three. Um, he can't decide is Werner a ten or is he is he a nine? Obviously, when Lukaku's in it, he's either 10 or he's dropping out. The only one who's really delivering on a consistent basis is is um, Mason Mount. Abbott's has shown it in fits and starts, but what they need this week is whether they're going with the four or the three, what they need is they need all 11 players really, really clicking, getting back to the level that they were, and and maybe then they can they can test City. And like I suppose, again, the big thing with City is they're, they're not over-reliant on any one player, are they? Like He seems to be able to you know stick... 22 names into a hat and pull out whatever 11 I want and it doesn't really matter we're still going to be absolutely excellent and I can play Gabriel Jesus out wide or I can play him through the middle I can 
play Foden from the left where I can take him as a false nine. Like, it doesn't really, it seems to almost not matter. Now, of course, it does, like, the amount of work he's doing in the lead into each game and nailing down the intricacies of, of everything that we're seeing is is a huge, huge body of work. But that that lack of an over-reliance on one player is, is, is a huge, huge benefit for them. That's the half 12 kickoff tomorrow in the Premier League. Manchester City at home to Chelsea. At half past five, then it is round two between uh, Aston Villa and Manchester United. That game's on at uh, Villa Park. Uh, Ronaldo's on the warpath, reads the back of the Irish Daily Mail this morning, Shane. Uh, he complains Manchester United stars don't do enough gym work, has concerns over their attitude, fears they are ignoring his advice. Uh, just to give you a, a direct comment from the piece, a direct quote from, from the piece. Um, Since Ryanick arrived, I think in some points we are better, but he needs time. It's not that easy to change the mentality of players and the way they play, the culture, the system like that, I believe that he's going to do a good job. The mentality of the players, there's some suggestion that he's alienating himself in that dressing room, Shane, but he probably has a point, doesn't he? Jesse probably has a point, though, but it's very hard not to smirk and smile when you're, <laughs> when you're reading those comments and you're looking at who, who they're coming from at the same time, isn't it? Um, look, he's right. He's 100% right. It's just, I hope he... I hope he has some sort of level of self awareness that he realizes <laughs> that some would, some would see him as very, very much part of the problem that he's he's talking about there. Look, he there's no doubt everything he says is 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 bang on. Watching from the outside, they it absolutely does look like there's an attitude problem, um, lack of work rate, all the things that everybody has been saying recently. It's 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 so so obvious to to everybody really. There, there's it's just it's just not a harmonious group. It's not a group that that. What so what are values? I suppose values, hard work, and and that I think they just expect things to come to them a little too easily. And if that doesn't happen instantly, you get the the toys out of pram. Like I've never, you know, Rashford not following up Mason Greenwood's shot the other night was just incredible, really, mm-hmm. and just really, really looked like he was sulking that Greenwood hadn't played him to pass when, in truth, Greenwood had been in or, or Rashford had been in the exact same scenario in injury time in the first half and didn't square it to Greenwood either. So I don't know how he felt he could. He could sulk over that situation, but Ronaldo's right. But yeah, just needs to have a little look in the mirror there himself. I would have thought. <laughs> he he loved the the idea of looking in the mirror, though, Shane. That's the problem here. Uh, Shane, thanks <laughs> a million. Good stuff this morning. Cheers, guys.